Hello, I'm Tony Cotty and welcome to another Rudridge tutorial video. The horizontal and vertical alignment of the kerb would have been determined by the designer. To ensure that the kerb system performs to deflect traffic away from the kerb, the distance between the toe of the kerb and carriageway surface must be at least 25mm. At the location of the proposed kerb line, the formation is approximately 615 to 630 millimetres below the top of the kerb design level. Alternatively, build up levels with suitable pavement material. An engineer or a surveyor will have set out the kerb alignment. The kerb line is set out with marker pins and string lines. It is preferable to set the string line for horizontal and vertical alignment using the face of the kerb as the datum point. Alternatively, it is possible to set out using the rear of the kerb as the datum, but it may be necessary to adjust the horizontal alignment to ensure the face of the kerbs align. When bedding onto a mortar bed, a preformed concrete bedding or race is preferred because it is easier to compensate for any variations in the height of the kerb particularly when there is a kerb line that contains quadrants and radius kerbs. Using this method provides good adhesion to the concrete base. If laid directly on a concrete base, ensure that the concrete has not set and is still workable so the kerbs can be bedded into the concrete, allowing for height adjustment and to provide adhesion, particularly between full kerbs and components. If using a mortar bed foundation, allow the concrete to harden before applying a bonding mortar just prior to installing the kerbs. Ensure the mortar is still fresh so that the kerbs will adhere and can be adjusted for any variability in height. This is particularly important between the straight kerbs and components. The gap between adjacent kerbs should be 3 to 12 millimetres. Trief kerbs are too heavy to be manually handled. However, the complete range can be installed by using mechanical or vacuum lifters. The kerb is bedded into the mortar or the kerb bedding using a pavia's maul. The position of the kerb may need adjusting to ensure the face is aligned. This is done with a crowbar, levering at the base of the kerb, not the top of the kerb, so not to damage any exposed surfaces. After the kerb has been correctly installed, it is backed up with a concrete haunch. To achieve a containment level of N1, when tested in accordance with BS EN 1317 Part 2, the concrete backing needs to be one metre wide and to the full depth of the kerb. The footpath and carriageway is then constructed or reinstated. Transition kerbs are available to allow Trief kerbs to connect to British Standard HB2 kerbs. Various components, such as quadrants, are available to enable the designer to achieve their kerb layout. Various components, such as quadrants, internal and external radius kerbs, are available from Rudridge to enable the designer to achieve their kerb layout. It is also possible to supply kerbs in GST2 profile that are only 370mm high compared to 415mm high and cored to allow installation over dowel bars. These kerbs are usually used on bridges as it is not possible to bed the kerb into the carriageway. In these applications, the Trief kerb is usually adhered to the bridge deck using an epoxy resin. Here we can see the Trief redirectional kerb doing its job during a test at the Transport Research Laboratory, where a 1500 kg car strikes at 50 miles per hour. During the test sequence, none of the wheels of the vehicle passed over or under the safety barrier, critically reducing the risk to pedestrians and structures beyond. For full details, please go to the Rudridge website, www.rudridge.co.uk. 
For technical design and support, please contact your local Rudridge branch for details.